Hello everybody, hope we're all doing well. What a crazy freaking day as 100 Thieves is trying to break records for the fastest roster changes that we have ever seen in Valorant. Throwback all the way to the Korean roster. This one has just been one up after a few matches, a handful of matches, and what could be called, I don't know, four to five days. It is now Baby J and Eccles off the roster immediately following a 13-0 Mat 3 loss to the guard, which of course has all the memes. 100 Thieves got 13-0'd and now 100 Thieves getting 13-0'd has killed the roster as they have now made two changes for both of those players within 24 hours of that loss to the guard. It's a pretty crazy situation. Obviously, a lot of people freaking out all over the timeline. It was actually Nade Shot taken to Twitter a couple times yesterday after the loss, which had people thinking, okay, maybe after everything is done in terms of the qualifier, 100 Thieves will make changes. It's, it seems pretty apparent something has to be done, although we weren't sure what. Well, he was not kidding because he wasted literally zero time exchanging those players. As he first tweeted, the performance was absolutely unacceptable from us. Not much else to say. Just can't happen, period. He shortly followed it up by saying, I'm not speaking for the players when I tweet. I respect all of our talent in and out of the game. I love this organization that we've built, and I'm genuinely invested in every match we compete in. I want our teams to succeed. I'm competitive, and I care, plain and simple. And a pretty straightforward message, right? You think, okay, maybe they'll gut it out. The rest of this and try and figure something out on the team it seems that is no longer the case as the entire timeline is now broke as not only were these players dropped they were replaced within such a small window I don't think anyone saw this coming that fast. As right away, after the announcement, of course, win broke of those two players being replaced, it's already Bang and JC standing joining the team, both on loan, which is absolutely incredible. Most importantly as well, why you're probably here, Nade Shot also addressing the situation, which he has done on rare occasion on Twitter before by posting these lengthy videos. So here's Nade Shot explaining these Valorant changes. What he goes on to say is not based on skill, is not based on the results, but more of a mindset, something deeper on this team was clearly not working and that's why the changes had to be made what's going on everybody uh i just want to take a second real quick to talk about the announcement uh regarding our valorant roster obviously i know it probably comes as a surprise that we're moving away from baby j and Eccles. first and foremost i just want to say thank you to both those players there is never ever under any circumstance where I want there to be a situation where their involvement with our organization is as short-lived as this one. And I think they're both incredibly talented players and clearly have a future in professional Valorant. And I think they'll land on their feet, or at least that's my hope, not only professionally, but personally. I think their contribution should not go uh, overlooked. And I really just want to say thank you for them and the time that they invested into our organization. I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding why we made this decision. It's, it's, it's tough to say that this wasn't a results-based decision, but it really wasn't. Uh, you know, obviously a disappointing loss yesterday to the guard. Cloud9 got the better of us, uh, beating us 2-0 last week. And I think a lot of people just don't have the ability to – look deeper into what causes issues with teams and rosters. In a lot of cases, in my experience of competing, sometimes it really doesn't come down to the talent and it doesn't come down to the results. It comes down to the culture, the mindset, and the philosophy and how the game should be approached. And Call of Duty was one thing. It's, 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 a, it's a little bit more singular in how the way the game is played. There's really only a couple right ways and a lot of wrong ways to play the game. But with Valorant, with all of the utility and the composition of agents, I feel like you can really get lost in the weeds and how the game should be played and how you should approach each match and each map that you end up competing on. So I would say this was a decision that we felt was necessary for the success or the potential opportunity for us to qualify uh, in the future of 2022 in all the tournaments that are to come. And the format is just grueling, to be honest with you. Only two teams go to Iceland. And basically, if you don't qualify, your year is done besides some of the you know tier two or tier three tournaments that you can play in across uh, different tournament platforms and websites and, and organizations. So it's, it's really make or break. And we just felt like we didn't want to wait out the inevitable. Uh, we just felt like the roster and the players and the way that they meshed just didn't fit well together. 
And so, you know, you got to take a big swing. And so we're excited to welcome Bang and JC Stanny uh, to the roster. And we hope that we can find success. I'm really sorry to the community that's looking for a better long-term solution. I know that it's never fun dealing with turbulence and the rosters and, you know, it's never fun to not have confidence in the organization that is, you know, fielding these players. But we, we, we're, we're trying to win, and uh, we never want that to come at the cost of, you know, recycling players and, and, and really not giving people the, the opportunity to perform and, and prove themselves. But it's a cutthroat circuit, and I think these are changes for the best. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that can give you a little bit of insight as to how we were thinking through this and we now are looking forward to our match next week and hoping we can find some success so thanks for listening thanks for understanding and uh hopefully that made sense y'all take it easy and i understand where he says it's not because of skill that's obvious right all five players are probably very very skilled and of course deserve to be in the top tier scene beyond that though it's saying that it's not because of results seems a bit odd because it, it comes right after a very terrible result. So it's hard not to correlate some of these issues to the results. Like obviously if this team was winning, would they be making these changes? You don't necessarily usually see that. So that could be argued. I think the bigger point here being that clearly something was so wrong, they were willing to make these changes knowing the backlash they were probably going to receive for making them. I do love his transparency. I love that he speaks up. Not many owners will go on Twitter and post a four minute video explaining it. It doesn't save the fact that you do feel bad for baby and you do feel bad for Eccles who at the end of the day, coming all the way from the UK, getting a visa, getting over here as well to move out here after a few days. So it seems to be with Hunter Thieves and a few matches to have everything say, yep, you know what? It's just not going to work out. You're left feeling gutted for someone like that. I am sure Baby and him will maybe explain somewhat of the situation and what did happen, but I hope, and I would I would hope that Hunter Thieves does this correctly and at least paying them out, you know, a month, a couple months of salary, doing something to show them out the door, at least in a bit more of a polite fashion. I would expect that from Hunter Thieves, but who knows if they got it, because if not, that absolutely sucks. It is a constant reminder out there about the stability in the esports scene. And I think some people out there made a great, great point about this. This shows a lot. If you were a player about to go to Hunter Thieves, do you really want to stay in an organization or want to play and compete for an organization who isn't going to give you more than a week's chance to actually prove yourself? It's a scary time to be an esports pro player, especially in Valorant, where it is so cutthroat. It seems to be match to match, qualifier to qualifier, whether you are in or out of a team based on the results. It's so scary that so many teams out there are just again and again and again. The turnover rate of so many teams out there, especially in Valorant, is so high. It's a scene that I never would want to be a player in. So what do y'all think about this? Best of luck, of course, those players, Baby and Echoes going forward. We will see what Hunter Thieves does and how they deal with all the hate. There are a lot of teams out there receiving a lot of hate this week, and Hunter Thieves has just jumped almost to the top of the list. They're still cloud nine because that's also crazy. Okay, till next time, drink some water, drink some coffee. Okay, bye.